letters as part, of the, discovery, as part of the discovery for a given matter, which can be really frustrating because I look at the bigger picture where I see, you know, I, I have I have cases of, you know, child abuse that have less paperwork than this. So what, where are our, our priorities and why, again, is it at the expense of my ability to choose choose food for myself? So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask, you know, we're in Wisconsin and we're watching this case with uh, Vernon Hirschberger, as, as Ajna pointed out, uh, this kind of uh, piling on, uh, on, on uh, and then singling out uh, of uh, Vernon. It makes it look like that's, that's what the state uh, is doing in its entirety. But um, there's, there are other things going on in Wisconsin which are actually kind of encouraging, at least uh, from, from a distance. Or there's, uh, there has been a long-term move to get legislation passed that would allow raw milk uh, to be uh, uh, to be uh, legalized from the from the farm, and that would be a huge step in the state because there are an awful lot of dairies that are making raw milk available, making other foods available, like um, Vernon is doing, and and aren't being hassled. Uh, so, but maybe Vince, you could talk a little bit to kind of the, sure. the larger picture here in Wisconsin and your own experience. Uh, I'd be glad to. By and large, Wisconsin is not <clears throat> not a bad place to live, and uh, but it is interesting with Mark and Oz here both both were leading in the same direction, and that the real culprit is not in the courtroom uh, across the street. The, and the, I mean, the dad cat people really don't want to be in the business of harassing little farmers like Vernon. Somebody's telling them to do that. And uh, there's a legislation being introduced in Wisconsin very soon, we hope, we, we thought this week, but uh, to legalize the sale of unpasteurized milk. And it's being opposed by a group called the Safe Milk Coalition. And uh, <clears throat> the Safe Milk Coalition um, starts with the Wisconsin Grocers Association. First of all, their letter says that we can't legalize the sale of unpasteurized milk in Wisconsin because it is too dangerous. It's dangerous. And uh, they don't have any documentation that says quantitatively that it's dangerous. There's nobody that's been getting sick. There's no, no statistical uh, basis for it, but they simply say it and people repeat it. And uh, the, uh, the, the document is uh, uh, the specific groups that are lined up are, first of all, people concerned about our health, the Wisconsin Grocers Association. They don't want Vernon Hershberger selling that milk. They want to sell the milk. Next on the list is Foremost Farms, the large, biggest dairy in the state, and Dean's Foods, and the Farm Bureau, and the, the Professional uh, Dairy Groups Association, the Cheesemakers, all of these people that want to control who gets to sell the food in the state. Because what Mark said is just absolutely dead on. The, 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 the thing that, I mean, agriculture has gone in two directions in the last 15 or 20 years. Mega farms, thousands of cows, tens of thousands of acres, and then this, these nice little specialty farms. And uh, these nice little specialty farms, people love them. They like to go out there and take their children out there and see the chickens and the cows and, and the ducks and, uh, and buy food. And, uh, you know, in Wisconsin, if the sale of unpasteurized raw milk was legal, there would certainly be three, four, five hundred farms, each of them with one or two hundred customers. All of a sudden, you have ten or twenty or thirty thousand people, and that is a threat. And the time to nip it in the bud is right now. <laughs> and uh, and that is why this this uh, this uh, trial is taking place across the street. It's not Cheryl Daniels and Jackie Owens. It's the Farm Bureau, the Wisconsin Grocers Association, the Professional Dairy Groups Association, and, uh, and uh, they, they, just, well, they just dial up dead cap and say, this guy doesn't have permits. And the permits, of course, are something that they have helped write, and they can easily, easily uh, follow them and adhere to them. And the other thing about money is all the money, the average cow in the state of Wisconsin generates around $20,000 of income. On the little farm that we have, 36 cows, if we sell all of our cows, all of our milk to the local dairy, we would generate about $120,000 of income per year. If we sold from those 36 cows, that same milk direct to consumers, the number is $650,000. So who's getting the money right now? Well, it's those guys on the list that are opposing the passage of the 
or on milk billing in the state of Wisconsin. Not the small farmers. Correct. So, thank you very much. And next, uh, I'll, I'll ask uh, Alvin Schlangen to, to speak. Alvin, um, you know, was in the same position as uh, Vernon was in um, last September. He went on trial on charges very similar to what uh, Vernon is facing. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, he can, well, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, he, he, he won his case. Uh, and it strikes me that uh, one of the things that's going on here is uh, that the prosecution has read very carefully the transcript in that case uh, uh, that Alvin uh, went through, um, but, uh, and, and is trying to correct the, what they see as the errors that the prosecution made there. But um, what's also interesting, you know, uh, Vernon won his case, and um, you would think he'd be uh, home free. Well, he's still, uh, the, the Minnesota Department of Agriculture uh, decided that um, that didn't really count, and they still have two other cases uh, they're pursuing against him on similar kinds of charges, and it, 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 it reeks of uh, double jeopardy, but uh, the judges, of course, uh, uh, don't see it that way, um, and he is still facing additional uh, charges. But maybe you can talk a little bit about the climate in Minnesota. Uh, there's been a lot of activism opposing, uh, as there has been here in Wisconsin, opposing the, the, um, the tough stand against the small farms like, like yours. So if you could just maybe fill us in a little as to kind of what's happened uh, since you won your case and how it's going. <clears throat> Thank you, David. Uh, I see so many similarities between what, if you look at um, Grease and Acres membership, it's word for word the same as ours. This came from California, from homogenous right to choose healthy food. Um, the reality is that we are doing so many things to connect people with, the, with their food again that it, it, it's such a feel-good situation in, in the community that you can't, you can't imagine trying to stop something like that if you were you know, not prejudiced by profit somehow. Um, we're still looking at, I say we because I, I don't feel like this is me on trial in Minnesota. It's, it, my name is on the paper, but there are 200 families that are involved in either securing their food supply or losing it. And it's the same thing here. I, when I first saw Vernon's um, list of products that are available to the members, I, just, I, I was blown away by 16 pages of, of healthy food. You know, there isn't anything on there that isn't medicinal food, so uh, these guys are obviously uh, looking at a whole different standpoint of food safety than we are. You know, if, if you can uh, manipulate it and take all the life out of it and then make a profit on it, then that's agribusiness. Well, what we're doing is not agribusiness, it's, it's private food production, and it needs to be connected to the family that's taking it and cooking it or eating it raw or, you know, sharing it with their community. That's, that's where we need to go. Great, thank you. Uh, I have one, one other question I'd like to ask each of you, and then maybe what we could do is open it up, uh, uh, open up to get some uh, questions here. Uh, but um, I, I'd, I'd like to hear from each of you just where, uh, where, where can, what, what can we do and where can we put our efforts to, to change things? What, what kinds of uh, uh, efforts are required to, um, to, 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 to kind of turn this really kind of dismal picture. I mean, it's dismal in the sense that we're up against these huge forces, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very, um, uh, it's just a, 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 it's tough to fight the big money 
that way. So what, what, what kinds of things uh, can we do to build on what's going on here? Yeah, that's a really big question, David, and it's such a great question. And I think everybody sitting in this room today has provided part of the answer to that, which is show up, be there. Take off work, do whatever it takes, show up when our farmers are in trouble, make the extra effort to source your food directly from a farmer, produce some of your own food, pay attention to what's going on, join with your community, and you know, basically it's, it's just do whatever you can. Uh, for me personally, I've found my inspiration in Irene Sendler, and she was a hero in World War II Poland. What she did was she risked her life to rescue uh, Jewish children and babies from the concentration camps. And I see the, the, the food movement and the food rights movement as something that is going to get worse before it gets better, and I see it as something that we can all find, who, whoever it is that inspires us to reach our limits and reach our capacity in, in activism and involvement, whatever, whatever it looks like for each of us, and it's going to be different for each of us, but find your inspiration, come to these events, show up, you know, bring, bring your family, you know, go, go to help a farm instead of a summer vacation.